be my final show performances in London. This will be it. This is it. And when I say this is it, it really means this is it. The involuntary manslaughter of Melanie, Dr. Murray. How do you plead? Your Honor, I am an innocent man. I therefore Thank plead you. not guilty. Okay. I truly feel that Conrad Murray is simply the fall guy. This was definitely something that was premeditated that they had planned to do and they planned to take my brother out and my brother knew it and that's why he told me repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly that this was going to happen to him he explained it to me he explained it's because of my catalog which is my publishing and they're after it and they want it and they'll put they want their hands on it and they want to take it away from me In a career spanning four decades, Michael Jackson left behind a musical legacy of 13 number one singles, an estimated 750 million worldwide record sales, and a lifetime worth of two billion dollars. But on June 25, 2009, while deep in preparation for his highly anticipated comeback tour, This Is It, Michael overdosed on sleep medication and died of heart failure, aged just 50 years old. Days before his death, Michael mysteriously said, They're going to kill me. Fans all over the world were in shock. But for the Jackson family, Michael's death came as no surprise. And according to them, it was no accident. My heart, and I said my brother was murdered. It was a conspiracy. Was Michael's death the work of foul play? To answer that, we must look at the clues from the time of Michael's death. Exhibit A propofol intoxication. The two autopsies performed on Michael's body both concluded that he died of acute propofol intoxication. Propofol is a powerful sedative used to anesthetize patients before surgery. Michael's personal physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, had prescribed propofol to treat his insomnia. But according to sleep expert Dr. Nader Kamanga, unmonitored use of surgical anesthetic is dangerous and should never be prescribed as a sleep remedy. In November 2011, Dr. Murray was found guilty of second-degree murder for prescribing Michael Jackson dangerous amounts of propofol. The court imposes four years imprisonment in this case. The defendant caused the death of Michael Jackson. But the story doesn't end here. Dr. Murray may have killed through negligence, but Murray was hired by Michael Jackson's entertainment promoter, AEG Live. Was this an unfortunate medical mishap? Or did music mogul's AEG have something to do with Michael's demise? Exhibit B, AEG Live. Michael had a long history of tensions with his bosses. Tensions between the pop star and his record label, Sony, were apparent at least a decade previous to his death, when Michael released this. His controversial 1995 hit, They Don't Care About Us, is an explicit attack against power and inequality, which many have interpreted as a direct critique of the music industry and its poor treatment of musical performers. In 2002, Michael echoed these views when he called Sony chairman Tommy Mottola the devil after the company tried to destroy his comeback album, Invincible. Tommy Mottola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. The record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can. Michael had publicly outed the power and injustice of the music industry. And in June 2009, the story was the same. But this time, under heavy pressure to rehearse for his entertainment promoters AEG Live, Michael's health began to deteriorate rapidly. In 2013, Michael Jackson's family filed a lawsuit against AEG. 
The Jackson family lawyers argue that during the critical run-up to This Is It, AEG ignored Michael's deteriorating health and threatened Dr. Murray into pumping Michael with heavy sedatives so that he could be rested for rehearsals. AEG contend that Michael had full control over his medication and is responsible for his own death. But propofol works within 40 seconds of administration, meaning that it would have been almost impossible for Michael to inject himself with a lethal dose of the drug. Exhibit C, the night before. They're going to kill me. Michael said these words in confidence to his son, Prince, and he was referring to the CEO of AEG Live, Randy Phillips. At Dr. Murray's trial in November 2011, Prince testified that the night before his father's death, Randy Phillips visited Michael's mansion while Michael was at rehearsal and aggressively threatened Dr. Murray. The next day, Michael died.